Welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't posted in a few years, but um, getting back into it. So this is an art journal that I created since the pandemic, since I've been working from home. And it's been a nice sort of healing kind of thing. Um, just kind of something therapeutic to get lost in a bit. If you don't art journal, but you enjoy art, I highly recommend it. It's a very, there's no wrong way to do it. So it's a, it's a very nice project if you need something to distract your mind uh, or keep you busy. So this is just actually what a lot of my pages start as, is just kind of color and lines and whatnot. I don't, uh, I get very intimidated by blank pages. So I like to intentionally kind of make them messy and dirty and it gives me shapes and visuals to play off of. And if there's things I don't like, I can always glue things down and cover them up with other paper or imagery. There's construction next door. So if you can kind of hear, uh, you know, construction sounds, that's what that is. Sorry about that. So I've learned with stencils. You can just get them at craft stores like Michael's. And if you use a thick medium, like matte gel or a modeling paste, it'll give you much cleaner edges. You can also use a hard body acrylic paint and it'll give you a pretty clear stencil. And that's what the flowers are. I like to use India ink pens. I use Faber Castell because they are fantastic. They last a good amount of time. They give you really dark pigment. They're great because you can use water media over it and it won't bleed. If you like a bleeding look with your ink, there's definitely other pens you can play with that will work better for that. And I have a friend who gave me some very fun vintage photographs. So this is one of them. And then some teacups. I really enjoy using tissue paper as well. That's what this is. It's some tissue paper right here with the little black dots. 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 Uh, especially if it's a lighter color. It'll usually turn fairly translucent, so you can see color underneath, but any opaque shapes, so the black dots here or the gold shimmery circles here will show up really clearly, but you still get the imagery underneath, which is a very fun, fun thing to play with. I also enjoy these iridescent paints that you can kind of see. They'll change color, especially if you put them over a dark color, like a deep black or a deep navy. It will look different than when it's over just a white or a plain page. And those can come in kind of different shades. This one is a greenish. But you'll also find red, uh, violet, blue. Here's a blue one here. You can kind of see it shimmer. This is another stenciling. There's some honeycomb which I like. This is a piece of birch bark that I took. And there's little die cut kind of paper punches that you can get, again, at any craft store. And I've found that they're a very fun addition. We have some here, I'm using the negative space and then positive space. Here's more tissue paper with the pattern. And 
I also really have started liking gold in my art, which I used to not enjoy at all, but I've kind of, I've warmed up to it now. So I'm kind of adding more hints of warm colors and gold in my work. And stamps are also very fun. We have another birch bird right here. Some more stenciling. This one's pretty thick. You can kind of see here, I think. Yeah, and it gives you a nice kind of indicator of how thick it is, which is, I really enjoy texture. So a lot of my books and a lot of my mixed media art will have a lot of use of very tactile textures. This is my grandfather. It's an old picture of him when he was in the army and stationed in Alaska. He passed when I was a freshman in college, I think. But it's kind of fun to see those old photographs of, of your grandparents when they were younger. Kind of remember that they were my age once, you know. This is from some fun Japanese fabric that is a little deer. Here we have a lot of, this is tissue paper again, back here. More India ink drawing. I also really like to use fluid acrylics, which you'll find have a very liquidy texture to them, which is great because it's very easy to paint with. So if you want clean lines that will come down very easy like these, uh, a fluid or really soft body acrylic is a good choice. These are more butterflies that are kind of like the birds. So you just have a paper punch that's in the shape of a butterfly. There's also little leaves in the background that I've used old book pages to make the little leaves. And those are also just cut out with a little paper cut. And we have texture here. It's more stencil. And then this female figure is from a print, an intaglio print plate that I did in college. So I just have old prints that I kind of throw in art here and there. And So here we have more stamps. If you are into art journaling, a very fun thing you can do is match your lines. So for example, I have this kind of building here and then this stamp and I matched up the lines of the building on the stamp with the building behind it. And so that kind of creates the illusion that it's one sort of piece that they kind of go together, which I find very fun. Um, over here too with the green, the land in the stamp kind of lines up with the horizon line. So that's a fun way to make implications that imagery kind of fits together, even though it's found. more gold. Things change. You can tell by some of the text in it that I'm kind of trying to make peace with the changes in our day-to-day -day life, our new normal. And part of that I think is just reminding ourselves that, that things change. Things have become very different but they'll slowly change again into something else that's our new normal and hopefully we're kinder and healthy and compassionate when it's all over. So this is just iridescent acrylic paint and more tissue paper but this is a maroon colored tissue paper 
so it isn't translucent. And it makes fun wrinkles if you want to use it for that. Some tissue paper that's highly pigmented like this will bleed a little bit when it gets wet. So that's important to keep in mind if you want your colors to stay in one area. You know, you want to just kind of glue it down and leave it. Also, when it gets wet from the glue, it becomes very fragile and easily ripped, which can give you really cool textures if you want that kind of tear apart look. But if that isn't something you're going for, you just need to be aware that it, it gets very, very fragile and you have to be very gentle when you use tissue paper. Here we have more use of iridescent paint. Oh, it's so shiny, it's hard to tell. But a lot of these little stars are either white, just opaque white, or they're an iridescent color, like an iridescent blue. I like to make up constellations. I, I think there's something fun about that. I'm not sure why. Uh, I don't know. I guess the space is so vast. I did a project years ago now that was a drawing a day for 366 days because it was a leap year. And so a lot of these little guys are drawings from that series because I ended up with a lot of sketches and not really anything to do with them. So I've been including them in art journals or mixed media works over, over the past years since. A lot of this underneath is stream of consciousness writing that I did ages ago. And then I just kind of kept parts I liked. I think this is a very fun spread. I just kind of let them develop. I really don't have any idea what it's going to look like. I just kind of grab pieces and if they seem to kind of fit with the visuals, I keep them and if they don't quite feel right, then I then I change it up. I really like to add dimension in my art journals. So you have kind of what feels like a foreground and then background areas. It just gives them more depth. But again, there's no wrong way to do it, which is what makes them so fun. My pages are very thick because I tend to use a lot of cardstock papers or postcards. And a trick with those, if you're using really thick papers, is to peel the back part of the paper off because you can usually kind of get an X-Acto blade and kind of take a corner and, and peel part away the back, which makes it thinner and easier to use. This is more of that cute deer fabric I really like. This is a little metal, I don't know, decorative charm. I think it's probably used for scrapbooking. I get a lot of odds and ends from scrapbooking because they kind of make cute or interesting visual elements to include. This wasn't tissue paper, but it was a really thin kind of rice paper or homemade kind of paper that had these fish on it. Here's more die cuts of those birds. But again, I'm using the negative space except for this one. And here's the leaves. Leaves. <laughs> Here are the leaves cut out. 
I've gotten into doodling a lot more. Again, just using those markers, just kind of playing with the lines and the details. And this is again, that kind of liquidy acrylic. So here are more flowers that were stenciled on. And then once that dried, I went over with some color, which is also kind of fun. This particular one is more of a modeling paste, so it has more texture to it. I'm not sure, let's see if you can see it up close. Kind of has more texture where if you use a matte gel or a gloss gel, you won't have as much texture to it. It'll be much smoother. This is some fun paper I found that has kind of tarot card imagery on it. I really like the sound of that. So once I thought it would be fun to learn how to do origami, uh, it's very hard. I'm not very good at it. So I at one point made this little dog that I then cut in half and put in here. I think that's the only thing I ever made with origami was this little dog. Uh, you know, so there was one. I think I followed a YouTube tutorial or something. I enjoy playing with the silhouettes of figures or animals. I think it kind of creates a sense of atmosphere and almost like a story in and of itself when you don't have all the details, when your mind has to kind of interpret what the feeling might be behind the posture or the movement. And lines. I love, I love leaves. I end up drawing a lot of nature elements in my work. They just kind of happen. Again, with the use of drawn elements and then paint, and then going over it with fresh ink, also creates a sense of depth because you have some that are more clear and some that are clearly um, layered behind, either behind papers or paints. More of that tarot card paper. It's very subtle. This is playing with silhouettes again, where what would be the leaves in the positive space is left negative, so you can see the imagery that was originally behind it. We have some iridescent gold there as well. You can kind of, oh, too shiny. You can kind of see the hint of iridescence there with the gold. And this is a goldfish in silhouette. It's a bit tricky to see. I don't think it's necessarily obvious, but that's what that is. There's some fun textured papers. You can get, they're kind of embossed. So they have that nice, just adds again, more texture, which I love. Over here, there's some just paint. So it's thick paint with the brush strokes which kind of give you that, those lines of just thick brush. More stamps. I just bought a bunch of old stamps once. 
I really enjoy those kind of Harlequin pulp romance novels, the really old vintagey ones. I got a bunch of old just book covers of them because I think they're so funny, kind of. They're just so to the point of, you know, these torrid love affairs or whatever. And I just find them very fun. And that's what this is, this part of a book cover. And children. This is part of a kid's book about something. I don't know. I didn't read it. I just stole stuff out of it. Um, Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. This is a street light that I sketched when I was in England. Again, during that uh, 366 drawings with the gold kind of adds a feeling of luminescence to it, I think. This is an old Polaroid of me working in my studio. It's kind of hard to see, but there's my hair and like my back, my arm, my knee is up, I'm sitting on the floor, which I did for years and years and years until I turned older and that hurts my back. So I don't do that anymore. I now work at a proper desk. This is some fun wood grain. It's translucent except for the wood grain part, which is gold. So again, it just kind of creates a neat visual because you can see the art behind it. And more of the butterflies here. Tissue paper again. This is from an old canvas piece I did. So I ripped out the canvas from the wood, the wooden frame, and kind of took it apart. I don't think any art is ever too bad that it needs to be thrown away. I think there's always elements that you can use. So I took out the figure. So little dandelions, dandelions. And more negative space of the butterflies. Here we go. This is another part of a print I did in college. There was more to it, it wasn't just a chair. But I thought that worked for the kind of scene being created. And again, this awesome kind of fabric with texture on it. You can see that it's raised a bit. It's hard to tell, but it's raised and textured with the silver. Again, I'm sorry about the construction sounds. So my friend, doctor, and it was John, under, underneath it. But now it's my friend, Dr. Curious. Uh, but that's kind of one of the, the covers again of those old romance books. Again, it's very thick. Thick pages. This is a different form of ground. It's glass beads. So originally it's translucent with these little, let's try bringing it up again. So normally it's translucent, but it has these little beads of glass in it, which give you that kind of texture. I added a translucent green to it, which then still makes it somewhat see-through in places. If it's very thin, like up here, you can still see through it. And then when it's thicker, it's, it's more opaque, but you can still tell that there's a translucency to it. A 
and that also is stenciled on. And all of these pages take time because you have to let these different things dry before you can, you know, turn the page and work on something else. This is a drawing I had left from college as well. It was from a life, from life drawing class. And we had a project where we were supposed to kind of draw in part of the skeleticature, skeleticature, part of the skeleton of the model to kind of get an idea just how your your figure works and how your bones move about. I'm sure it's not as accurate as it would be if I were a medical person, but I think it's a nice aesthetic to kind of have those elements slightly visible. And it says, be gentle with yourself, which is something I have to remind myself because especially with COVID, I have to remind myself that I just might not feel as productive as I theoretically should feel because I have free time now. But it's such a different atmosphere that it isn't as inspiring as if you just had a month off to to do your work or whatever. Little butterflies. They're more subtle. And teacups. Tissue paper. Again, I'm playing with the silhouettes of animals. So these are just birds that I sketched and then painted the outside instead of painting the inside. So you can see what was originally behind it. Oh, that construction is so loud. And be still. Peace and war stamp and rural America stamp. And Canada. I'm originally from Montana, so I feel a I feel at home with some rural America stuff, even though I live in a much bigger city now, which I love. Uh, you know, there's still bits that will always seem like home. This is another sketch from the 366 sketches. I used to work at a animal shelter dog kennel kind of place. And so I would sketch the dogs because I love animals and they all had such sweet personalities. Not all, some were naughty, but they all had their own character and it was delightful. This is a kind of paper in the background here that the white part of it is almost waxy to an extent. So the white kind of translucent paper that these are attached to absorbs color better. And these tend to stay more white because it doesn't absorb the color in the same way. And just more elements that kind of give it a, a feeling of depth, foreground and background. Here are more of those leaves. I've been playing with more subtlety too. I tend to make things very busy and crazy, believe it or not. You may not have noticed, I tend to make things busy. So I'm trying to kind of tone it down in some ways where I, I make things busy in a subtle way. So they're kind of not as overwhelming to the eye. Lots of butterflies here. This is a paper that's kind of like that velvety wallpaper that you'll see in some older houses that 
really does have the texture of velvet. You can kind of see there. It's tricky to work with sometimes because when it gets wet, all of that kind of flocking, is it? All those little fibers will kind of start to come off. So again, that's one of those things you need to glue on quickly and then just leave and let it dry because otherwise it will just kind of smear around onto the white and it'll make it kind of murky unless that's the look you're going for which it could be in which case perfect this is a picture of me that a friend took back when I lived on an island These stars are kind of fun. I had another artwork that originally had this kind of mass clump of these sparkly stars. And I didn't really like the piece anymore, but I thought the stars were fun. So I took them and cut them out into the little teardrop sort of shapes. glass house. And then I think it's fun also to play with lettering. I've really gotten into kind of calligraphy lettering lately with another body of work that I'm doing. So I've decided to kind of pull that into my art journaling a little more. This is kind of an Egyptian woman uh, that was actually painted originally on papyrus, so it has a bit of that papyrus texture to it. I think I cut off the head part and used it for something else, so I just had her body left. and. This is an old vintage postcard that I, I think I probably bought when I was living in England. Same with this, it's a vintage postcard. But I did the same thing where I matched up lines. So it kind of makes it all feel like it flows together in an intentional way. And it's just a very easy trick to make things kind of move into one another. Eve, this is a painting of Eve from Adam and Eve. Just the legs though. I'm sure I'll use the top half somewhere else. And then that's it. That. You can see again some of my early just making it messy. Sometimes I'll use coffee or yeah, here's another just kind of starting it that I never ended up using because this is a very long book. It's about 20 pages, 22. So yeah, that's this visual journal. So thank you for checking out my video. Thank you for taking the time to uh, enjoy just looking at some art and some calming sounds. All right. Take care, stay safe, and be gentle with yourself.